Welcome to my world. Two escargot, pate, frise, two green salads. Okay, man, it's not here. Lamb chop, steak frites. Shouldn't you be doing something? Two faux filet and a pepper steak. Come on, make the dessert. Chocolate tart, please. As a cook, tastes and smells are my memories. And now I'm in search of new ones. So I'm leaving New York City and hope to have a few epiphanies around the world. And I'm willing to go to some lengths to do that. I am looking for extremes of emotion and experience. I'll try anything. I'll risk everything. I have nothing to lose. My fellow Americans, what is our one culinary contribution to the world that's as original as jazz, baseball, rock and roll? That's right, barbecue. Ribs fall right off the bone. It's all ours. Even the French can't do it. So what do I know about barbecue? Yep, that about sums it up for me. Good night and thanks for tuning in. I kid, I kid. Actually, it turns out there's a barbecue debate more heated than the last presidential election. There's just no element of barbecue that's not controversial. What could possibly be controversial about barbecue? The cooking unit, the meat, fuel, the seasoning, and the most elusive, the expertise of the chef. I grew up in the country sleeping on a tree limb 30 feet off the ground. It's only natural that I wind up cutting trees down and cooking with them now. So what does all this madness add up to? It's the elusive barbecue triangle. Three regions of the U.S. locked in deadly battle over who does it the best. Mm. Kansas City. Kansas City is the barbecue capital of the world. Texas. Oh, this is going to be Texas-style barbecue, but, you know, just be sure that you like it. And North Carolina. Everyone has their special secrets, so, you know, we got ours. Never fear. I, your intrepid host, will investigate. I probably shouldn't wear my white linen suit when eating here. Yeah. First assignment, Kansas City. Serious, serious barbecue people. Kansas City is a microcosm of the barbecue world. While other regions specialize in specific meats, in Kansas City, they'll cook anything, anyhow. If it moves, barbecue it. One thing I've learned, good barbecue is not always pretty. Welcome to Oklahoma Joe's. Gas station, liquor store, convenience store, some of the finest barbecue in this country. If you want to get to the bottom of something, you start at the top. So I make a dinner date with Carolyn Wells, executive director of the Kansas City Barbecue Society. What, do, what should I order here? My favorite menu item is the Carolina pork sandwich, which is a pulled pork sandwich with slaw on top, served with bubble sauce, but their ribs are great, and I think they're cooking up some burnt ends just for you. Burnt ends, beef brisket. What is a burnt end? A burnt end is the charred part of the brisket after it's cooked that they used to throw away. Only in Kansas City that I know of have they really become menu items. Here they collect them all week so they can offer them one night during the week. Mm. Oh, wow. Now, this is criminally good. Flavor of the yin yang is great. So, so are there barbecue nerds? Absolutely. Complete with the, the plastic things in the pocket with meat promoters sticking out. Who makes the best barbecue? Well, Kansas City, of course. Hmm, a bold claim. In order to properly evaluate, I need to find someone in the trenches. A fellow chef. Ah, uh, Sunday afternoon in Kansas. We're here to talk about barbecue with the world-recognized grandmaster authority on the subject, Kansas City Barbecue, Paul Kirk, known as the Baron of Barbecue. I'm searching for that ultimate barbecue. I've never found it. Paul Kirk is like a barbecue prize fighter turned manager. He won loads of international competitions, and now he trains rookies. I decide to investigate, even if it means I gotta do a little work, maybe get my hands sticky. It's apron time for you. Jesus, am I putting on weight? Okay, what I have here, three briskets. I want to know which one you would pick and why. Hmm. Like the feel and the look of this guy. Nice, nice fat layer, a uh, nice conformation and shape, and I'm expecting that'll be uh, a nice mix of fat and lean. So how'd I do? Very good. I'm gonna show you how I trim them, and then I'm gonna let you trim the other one. I'm gonna try to trim down to quarter to an eighth of an inch of fat. Now you get to All do right. it. Time to show Paul a little classically trained technique. Take off some of this fat, all right? I know what I'm doing, I'm standing back. Yeah, you see me aiming at something good. Stop me. All right, boss, how'd I do? 
It hurts, doesn't it? Okay, this is a knife, not a saw. Oh. Oh. You're going like that. You forgot the most important part. Right, the right angle. So not a complete disgrace, but definitely oh. rookie status. Okay, maybe I've been away from the kitchen a little too long. But no, that's very good. Okay, we're gonna season these up. All right. Season salt, celery salt, onion salt, garlic salt. That's a basic rub. Now I tell my students, add your signature. Pick out three seasonings. Some examples of seasonings that people might use without being silly would be coriander. Coriander, oh. I saw that in your book. <laughs> no? Oregano, cumin, allspice. Got their wrist action down better than I do. <laughs> now that I've shown Paul a thing or two, it's time to put the brisket in the cooker. Oh, there he is. Now, how many hours are we talking about? Uh, we're talking probably, since it's certified Angus, probably 14. 14 hours? I don't think we'll be seeing barbecue brisket on Iron Chef anytime soon. That's one of the great things about barbecue, is that it's, it is the absolute antithesis of fast food. It's 15 hours, nice and moist, juicy. Just beautiful. Mmm. <laughs> See, now here's a good smoke ring. Good color, good penetration. It's moist, too. It's yeah. just beautiful. And there's bread, fix yourself a sandwich. Will do. Sauce or not sauce? One with sauce, one without sauce. It's simple. It's about perfect. You know, try a little with sauce. Mm. Tough call. Oh, you know, it is. Really is. Yeah. Mm. This stuff is so good, I'm ready to vote Paul Kirk into the White House. But it's not all about the chef, is it? This does not look like a backyard grill. It doesn't? No. Now, that's an $8,000 pit. I designed this in close pits down in Texas, build it for me. One thing I'll say about David is, first of all, you, you go around to all the different pits around. Look at the workmanship. So we're, we're talking real craftsmanship here. Yeah. Just when you think you've seen it all, $8,000 barbecues? This will require further study. Looks like I'm off to Houston, Texas. From Kansas to Texas. You think there's some hard and fast rules, individual way they do things in certain states. And I gotta tell you, I'm getting pretty confused. But one thing I'm I'm not confused about is who makes, who builds, designs, and constructs the best pits maybe in the universe. This is the man, Dave Close. And what's that grinding sound in the background? That's uh, the making of uh, That's the a making bunch of a guys pit. making metal stuff, you know. It's not safe around a welder. No kidding. This place looks like an episode of Monster Garage and a Boeing plant all rolled into one. If you think a pit is just a hole in the ground, think again. And I honestly believe that we make some of the highest quality and, and best engineered pits in the world. And I won't stop until I've made something out of everything in the planet Earth. You don't want to park a car next to us, trust me. Okay, so you're in the market for a barbecue pit, and you show up here. Dave is willing to custom design a pit for your individual needs. Your military kitchen coming up short on appliances? This is bulletproof glass? Yeah, this is this is the phone booth that was in the war in Sarajevo three years ago. These in the car pits, where you build a car, police car into a right. barbecue pit or something, the danger of that is that you never know. Right. You don't know if the glass is going to explode. Perhaps you're tough on appliances and require a more durable model. This is solid. You make solid objects. I can actually fire a 357 Magnum in this. You've tried that. Yes, yeah. I have. I've right. shot I shot everything inside. Maybe you're a hungry cosmonaut looking for a Dave Close encounter. I was working at NASA for years. And the administrator NASA's a woman. I told her I wanted to pit on the moon. She said, why? Why do you want to pit on the moon? I said, because when the Russians or anyone else lands, I want them to see the world's first close interplanetary grill. Maybe you desire a simpler model, but souped up with all the extras. Gas injected with a burner on the side. Very small smokestack in it. Adjustable fire rack, ash pan. Maybe you're thinking, I've got too many kitchen appliances. I need to simplify. Now this is a 14 foot beer bottle. In the neck is an actual three gallon pony keg with a beer tap right here. You just take this to your house, pull up, light it, pull out a couple of cases of beer. The whole block will shut down and have a party. No matter what your needs, you never leave the lot without taking a test drive. These are sausage stuff and bacon wrapped quail. These things are spectacular. Now this is the good stuff. This is my signature dish. This is actually eight to 10 count tiger shrimp that are stuffed with stone claw crab meat, wrapped with a malletized chicken tender, wrapped in maple smoked bacon and soaked at Cabernet Sauvignon overnight. This guy is full of surprises. I thought he was gonna pull out some carbonized hot dogs or something. This is an amazing dish. You cannot mess this up. If you do it bad, it's incredible. If you do it right, it'll take the top of your head off. 
give that a shot. Damn, look at that. OK, this is amazing. You got to try this quail, though. Oh, you're not kidding. This is spectacular. Wow, that's beautiful. This has got to be illegal somewhere. Hmm. Oh, yeah, that's way too good. I think I'm on the Atkins diet. That's like all meat, right? I haven't seen a vegetable in like three, four days. Man knows how to cook. It's not just food. It's not just a lifestyle. It, it, it's a calling. and It's an illness. <laughs> well, at least I didn't try cobra heart, you know. <laughs> I heard that you tried. I heard you almost got ate by a lion in Africa. <laughs> no, that's next season. So Texans can make barbecue pits. But can Texans barbecue? Dave says he knows a place where they make some of the best ribs and brisket in the nation. So, yeah, where are we, Dave? Yeah, we're at Roy Burns Barbecue. It's been here about 30, 35 years. Some of the best barbecue in Houston. I just wanted Tony to try it and see how real Southern hospitality and quality last, you know? Southern hospitality? Good Lord, it looks like a decent sneeze would level this place. That doesn't seem to stop the customers. People come from all over Houston, southwest side, east side, everywhere. They drive in traffic to get over here to eat this barbecue. That is definitely an endorsement. If you're willing to suffer for good food. And he's probably got a sauce that he wouldn't give up if you put a gun to his head, you know? <laughs> Anyone got a gun? <laughs> Despite outward appearances, Burns Barbecue is a large operation. They have a sizable staff and huge pits bursting at the seams with slow cooking ribs and briskets. Those right there will be there for about uh, more, five, six more hours. My choice is the ribs. I love the ribs. That's my specialty. According to Roy, the secret to his barbecue lies in the fuel. Slow burning oak, post oak. That's the secret doing the slow. Hey, I'm sold. Uh, yeah, but you know what? Enough food for, for, for two is good enough for us. Beautiful. Oh, man, it smells unbelievable. All right, well, thank you, sir. You uh, yes, please. Thank you. OK, great. We'll see them up front. Thanks, sir. We got two sample platters here. Oh, that's good brisket there, buddy. His ribs are delicious, man. Try some of that sauce. Yeah, I've been, uh, believe me, I've been mopping. That is some fine eating. You got a mustard-based potato salad with pickles. It goes with a barbecue. What they call asymmetric flavors. Everybody I met in Kansas City and everybody I met in Texas, they're damn intellectuals. I'm like always the stupidest guy in town everywhere I've been so far. Well, I didn't go through the third grade for nothing. That was the worst nine years of my life. <laughs> it's an amazing rib. Roy really understands the business. But the main thing is I tell my customers to come back and tell me, you know, if it's bad or good. Mm -hmm. So then I start looking for ways to change. Right. Well, you know, when you see cars lined up down the street, that's a good tip off, right? Limos and Cadillacs and pull up here, man. You never know who's getting out. Burns Place may not get a 30 for decor from the Zagats anytime soon, but Roy has mastered the golden rule. Make good food. So if you're on a quiet rural road in Houston and you see a huge line, get in it. You may just get to try one of the tastiest secrets in America. My barbecue investigation so far has introduced me to award-winning pitmasters and world-famous barbecue hotspots. But most of America gets their barbecue from one place, their own backyard. In this case, we're in the backyard of barbecue connoisseur John Lonergan. This is a strange and exotic environment for me. I have this overwhelming urge to put on an apron saying, you know, world's best dad, or I'm with stupid, or I need a novelty apron. Nice and quiet. Nobody to, you know, bother you, You're peaceful, you know, phone's not ringing. This is the essence of uh, a barbecue. Sitting in the backyard, waiting for the ribs to cook, drinking beer, right? I think those ribs are just about done, too. You want to go ahead and pop it open and take a peek? Of course I do. Rubbed with mustard and spices, these ribs cook for four hours. John pours on the slurry made from Coke and brown sugar. Oh, yeah, that's delicious. And one hour later, the perfect ribs. I'll get the plate out. And I'll let you do the honors, chop up some ribs. Oh, yeah? Cool. Yeah. And I'm cooking a lot on this show. I'm actually touching food on this episode. This is something it's I don't good. Get, You know, it's good. Putting I mean, me to work. All that beer you're drinking, you got to get some exercise. <laughs> so, Thanks. Uh, <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> so we're ready to go eat. Excellent. All right. And we got some salad. Salad? Wow, I, I forget what that is. Got something for you here. Way too nice of you. Oh. <laughs> well, I kind of get my wish, don't I? Here. OK, I can put this right to work, yes? Yes, sir. There's a, there's a knife for you. Yeah, it's yeah. Let's see if you remember how to cut ribs. If I don't stop working with food on this show, people are going to start thinking I'm an actual chef. I'm ready to eat. Me too. If I remember the, the dimly remembered past, I, when I last saw one of these, I think this is called a salad. 
dig in. Oh, it, you know, actually, it's well, literally falling off the boat. It, it's terrible here. Let me let me take that from you. Keep your eyes on your own plate, buddy. When the meat and the bone come apart, that easy. Mm -hmm. You know you got some good ribs. <laughs> a true American experience. Real backyard barbecue. This is the barbecue story encapsulated, you know? Now I can really say I've been everywhere. Barbecue burnout. Culinary peril of the American South. Happily, I find myself at the final stop of the barbecue triangle. Where are we, North Carolina? Cradle of barbecue where most people will tell you it all began. Okay, what's the difference between Texas, Kansas City, and North Carolina barbecue? North Carolina, it's all about big, 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 big. And when you're talking about Eastern North Carolina, you're talking about nose to tail, everything but the squeak. During my travels, I hear about a joint called Mitchell's, where they proudly specialize in whole hog barbecue. All right, let's go. We're going to the pit now. I'm introduced to proprietor Ed Mitchell, who promises to come clean on their entire operation. First step, trimming the pig. You gonna let Tony cut the feet? What am I thinking? I'm thinking about an episode of The Sopranos I saw a few weeks ago. Getting good at this, huh? Every now and then, we get one like me. He's a little healthy. He has a lot of fat glands. A lot of actors in Hollywood pay to have that done, you know, while they're still alive. Now <laughs> <laughs> this one, it got all the good stuff in it. Tongue, the, tongue, the brain, the brains, the eyeballs, the eyeballs, thymus gland. Yep, this is good eating. Now she's ready to go on. Thank you, brother. Now he'll take this story on back. That is really a symbolic of a salute because he's really going to make somebody very happy. My old gym teacher used to do that to me a lot. He's in jail now. No, no. He got the spanking now. <laughs> You're one of the balls now. You're an official barbecue man now. We got you now. All right. All right. It's time to cook the hog. We like to cook from eight to 10 hours. We definitely don't like to cook them anything under that. Right. Yeah. You gotta wanna get it. Oh, uh, pretty. And to me, that's real barbecue. The pit crew goes to work deboning the pig, pulling off the ribs, and hand chopping the meat. Well, child chop this and put it back into the skin. Okay, we're actually letting Tony taste it to make sure that his meat is approved. What we do here, we want to make sure that it's, the tenderness is there, that it's done. Mm, that's delicious. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. Just when I'm ready to dig in, Ed tells me it's time for the most important step. We're getting ready to season it. That is, put the vinegar and pepper sauce in it. You know, that's, this, is, this is putting the icing on the cake. In eastern North Carolina, you won't find tomato in the barbecue sauce. Get out your recipe cards. For every 100 pounds of pulled pork, simply add a load of red and black pepper, lots and lots of sugar, even more salt, then a real lot of vinegar, then just mix it all by hand. But it's not that easy. It's serious business. Tad a bit more salt. A little bit of white gold sugar. Did you put the crushed red pepper in there? Yeah, too much. Yeah, a little tad too much red pepper in there. Oh, yeah. Once Ed signs off, the meat is spread out and sprinkled with bits of crispy pigskin cracklings. Yeah, I have been eating barbecue for days, but I haven't seen this. This is beautiful. Crispy, crunchy, cooked pigskin. All the things I like about food, all in one dish. That is amazing. OK, so what do you do with a whole cooked hog? In Cook's Tour, we've seen salad bars, tapas bars, and raw bars. And this is the famous pig bar. But a pig bar? We have the trotters, as we call them, pigtails, the pig yes. ears. And you got to try the chitlins. Yeah, if there's a buffet in heaven, it looks pretty much like that. Best pig food I ever had. But I've had a fair, fair amount of them. The problem with pork these days is it, they're pushing the whole lean angle. This is a very bad way to go as far as promoting the glories of pig. Little bits of crispy skin. And man, this is beautiful. Well, it's very much my philosophy. You know, if you're going to kill a pig, you should eat every part of it. I mean, if a pig ever hunts me down and kills me, I hope that he uses every part. <laughs> Just 
Just when I think my investigation is over, I discover barbecue has battles within battles. Turns out in North Carolina, there's a barbecue civil war. Okay, when you're talking about barbecue in North Carolina, you're talking about, well, two major significant styles. You got your East North Carolina barbecue, which is kind of a vinegary whole hog thing, and you got your Western or Piedmont Lexington style barbecue. And uh, representing the West Side are Bill Eason and Jim Tab. Even in a real war, these guys would be useful. Jim is an ex-pilot, and Bill is an expert in blowing stuff up. But in the barbecue war, they're generals. I ask them what defines their territory. Is it true what they say? Is it about shoulder here? Shoulders. Pretty. And the shoulder is a, a juicy piece of meat. It's got more fat in yeah, the shoulder yeah. than the ham. OK, strategy number one, moist shoulder meat. Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's throw it on the grill. Strategy number two? Direct heat. As far as we're concerned, direct heat is the way to cook. That's right, direct heat. Instead of a separate firebox, these guys cook right on top of the flame. Brad, how long will these go? Anywhere from 12 to 14 hours. Let's fire them up. But it still takes 14 hours. The smoke's rolling now. You ready, Tony? Yeah, that's pretty. Could someone hand me a knife? I know we won't need a knife. I'm furious if you need a knife. <laughs> OK. If you need a knife, you got those pork. Right. See, it's just coming off the bone. No reason to fret. Looks like a knife will not be needed. Knife will not be needed. And we're talking to pulled pork. This is pulled pork as is. Looks mighty good. Yeah, you can't resist it. Go ahead. I want to talk about this. is your sauce oh. right here. What do you do uh, around here? You, you dip or you, or you dress? We're going to dip the okay. knife. Okay. Hell with decorum. Dip. Hey, hold on here. We're in North Carolina, and mm. the sauce has tomatoes? Well, Traditionally, the people in Eastern Carolina thought tomatoes were poisonous. As they came west, they began to add tomatoes. A little, a little tomato. Tony, what we got here is some pulled shoulder, some red slaw, and hush puppies. Perfect. That's what it's all Piedmont about. Piedmont-style barbecue. I like it here. I like it here a lot. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> I'm getting the idea that, that barbecue is an endless learning process. It I mean, I'll be the first to say, we don't know it all, but we feel like we do it in North Carolina like it was originally did. We were barbecuing when those people in Texas were chasing cows. So I've searched far and wide for America's best barbecue. Apologies to Memphis and St. Louis. What is my one absolute conclusion? Barbecue is not a cuisine, it's an obsession. But the barbecue debate should make us all proud. Barbecuers are free-thinking individualists. So show the world what you're made of, America. <laughs> Put on that apron and light up those barbecues from sea to shining sea. Now, where can I find a salad bar? <laughs>